The Real Princess, A Mathematical Tale, written by Brenda Williams, illustrated by Sophie Fadis. Long ago and far away, a king and queen had three sons. The eldest son was called Primo, and the second son was called Secundo. The third son was called Terzo. The king and queen had one butler, two footmen, three maids, four horses, five grooms, six dogs, seven gardeners, eight chimney sweeps, nine cooks, and ten soldiers. Now the king had a counting house in which he kept three bags of gold. Each bag contained 180 gold coins. One day my sons will marry, the king said to himself. These bags of gold will give them a fine start in life. Now, it was the custom at that time that the eldest prince should marry first, but only if he could find a bride fit to be the next queen. You must find yourself a real princess, said his father every morning as he tucked into his royal breakfast. Only a real princess will do. So Primo set off to find a wife. He searched far and wide, but he found fault with every princess he met. Her nose is too pointy, and she's much too bossy to be a real princess. He sighed. Her feet are too floppity, and she won't look me in the eye, he complained. The truth was, he simply could not tell if a girl was a real princess or not. Primo returned home full of gloom. I wish so much to marry a real princess, mother, he sighed. But how can I tell if she's real or not? Leave it to me, said the queen. I have a test that will prove beyond a doubt whether she is a real princess or not. Now you may like to know what no one else in the castle knew. The queen too had a counting house. It was a small shabby shed hidden away at the back of the gooseberry patch, and in it she kept nine golden peas. When the queen opened the door of the shed, the peas gleamed in the darkness. The queen smiled as she counted them, for she knew a secret about the peas. The next day, a terrible storm came. It was so wet and wild that the ten soldiers and the seven gardeners had to abandon their duties and come inside for shelter. Then, just as the storm was at its worst, Terzo heard someone knocking frantically, knock, 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 on the castle door. Standing outside was a young girl, and she was in a sorry state. The rain had drenched her clothing right through, and her hair fell in dripping straggles down to her waist. But as soon as their eyes met, Terzo's heart skipped a beat, and there was a spring in his step as he ushered her inside. That evening, the young visitor washed and dressed and sat down to dinner with the king and queen and their three sons. Who are you? said Primo. My name is Numerica, Princess Numerica, actually, said the girl shyly. The queen studied her through narrowed eyes. Then, while everyone else drank lobster soup made with the nine palace cooks, she slipped away to prepare a bed. She asked her three maids to bring up six mattresses and seven feather beds from the linen room. When the bed was ready, the queen tucked five golden peas under the bottom mattress. The next morning at breakfast, the queen asked the girl, How did you sleep, my dear? Oh, wonderfully, thank you, her guest replied. I did not wake until I heard the cockerel crow. The queen shook her head slowly. Then she went to the bedroom and threw the five peas out of the window. But Terza was delighted. She is princess enough for me, he said. I love her just the way she is. So the king took Terza to his counting house and gave one of the bags of gold to his youngest son. The young prince and the princess, who was not quite a real princess, married and lived happily ever after. Now when the king went to his counting house, he counted only two bags of gold, and when the queen went to her counting house, she had only four golden peas to count. One day, a dense, damp fog came down over the kingdom. The castle was hidden in a swirling, dark mist, and the paths seemed to merge into the bushes. Just when the fog was at its thickest, there was a loud knocking, knock, 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 on the castle door. This time, Secundo went to open it. Standing outside was a young girl, and she was in a sorry state. Her dress had been torn to shreds by brambles, her arms were cut and scratched and bruised, and her hair was tangled and matted with leaves and burrs. But as soon as he set eyes on her, Secundo felt his heart turn a somersault. 
That evening, the young visitor washed and dressed and tended to her cuts and bruises. Then she sat down to dinner with the king and queen and their two sons. Who are you? asked Primo. I am Pr Princess Calcutta, replied the girl in a rather grand voice. My parents live in a palace that is twice the size and they have three times as many servants. The queen looked at her guest carefully. She thought they might at least have found a real princess, but for, th for the girl had been brave with about her injuries and she appeared to be very well off. While Princess Cal Cal Calcula told everyone about her family's many servants, the queen slipped away to prepare a bed. This time, her three maids brought up eight mattresses and nine feather beds from the living room, and the queen tucked three golden peas beneath the bottom mattress. The next morning at breakfast, the queen asked the girl, How did you sleep, my dear? Oh, wonderfully, thank you, her guest replied. I did not wake until I heard the cockerel crow. The queen shook her head slowly, and she went to the bedroom and three, threw the three golden peas out of the window. But Secundo was delighted. She is princess enough for me, he said. I love her just the way she is. So the king took Secundo to his counting house and gave one of the two remaining bags of gold to his son. The young prince and the princess, who was not quite a real princess, but very nearly a real princess, married and lived happily ever after. Now when the king went to his counting house, he counted only one bag of gold. And when the queen went to her counting house, she only had one golden pea left. That summer, a heat wave descended upon the kingdom. The wide, rushing river sparkled as it flowed through the valley. Butterflies danced in the sunlight and flowers opened their petals wide. Primo was riding back to the castle after another failed journey to find a real princess when he heard someone singing. There, sitting in the shade of a tall oak tree, was a young girl. She was weaving flowers into a garland for her hair. She smiled at the prince and wished him a safe journey. But Primo had no intention of going a step further. He quickly dismounted and tied up his horse. Who are you? he asked. Hmm, let me see. Today, my name's Geometria, she said. What's yours? Primo, Prince Primo, as a matter of fact. Uh, are you a princess by any chance? The girl raised her left eyebrow and looked him straight in the eye. You'll have to judge that for yourself, she said. Why don't you stop asking questions and come exploring instead? So the two of them wandered the woods together, watching the doves and butterflies come and go and talking of many things. When evening fell, they rode back to the castle together. That night, the young visitor washed and dressed and sat down to dinner with the king and queen and their one son. Thank you so much for inviting me to stay, she said, with a voice that rang like silver bells. I hope you will all come and visit my family one day soon. The queen smiled as she listened. She only wanted the best for her son, and their visitor was enchanting. But was she a princess? While well, the rest of the party ate their ice cream sundaes, which had been created but to a secret recipe by the nine palace cooks, the queen slipped away to prepare a bed. This time, her three maids brought up nine mattresses <clears throat> and ten feather beds from the linen room, and this time the queen tucked just one golden pea beneath the bottom mattress. The next morning at breakfast, the queen asked the girl, How did you sleep, my dear? Oh, I'm sorry to complain when you have been so kind to me, her guest said, but although I had nine mattresses and ten feather beds, I felt most uncomfortable all night and I am black and blue all over. The queen looked at her eldest son and smiled. Then she must indeed be a real princess, my son, she said, for only a real princess would feel just one golden pea through nine mattresses and ten feather beds. You have found your true love at last. And she went to the bedroom and threw the pea out of the window. So the king took his eldest son to his counting house and gave him the last bag of gold. And the queen went to her counting house. But of course, she had no peas left. For though she had once had nine peas, she had used five peas for the first girl three peas for the second girl, and one pea for the third girl, and each time she had flung them out the window. But the queen smiled, for she knew a secret about the peas. 
The prince and the princess, who truly was a real princess and would one day be queen, married and lived happily ever after. The end. Almost. But not quite. Actually, it was not quite the end of the story, for now the king had no money left in his counting house as he had given it all to his sons. That night he asked the queen, how shall we manage, my dear? We have so many faithful servants who look after us. How shall we feed and pay them? Come with me, said the queen. So the king followed the queen into the garden. There, beneath the bedroom window, the nine golden peas had each taken root and grown into nine tall plants. But on just one of the plants shone lots of golden pea pods. This is from the pea that Princess Geometria slept on smiled the queen. That young woman is worth her weight in gold. Mark my words. She picked a pod and inside it glowed nine golden peas. She picked another pod and found nine more. Then she picked seven more pods and handed them to the king. My dear, she said softly, I think we have quite enough for our needs. The king was astonished and flabbergasted and speechless with delight. He hugged the queen and danced her all around the castle grounds. And the one butler, two footmen, three maids, four horses, five grooms, six dogs, seven gardeners, eight chimney sweeps, nine cooks, and ten soldiers all joined in the dancing. The real end. <laughs>